what's going on, all you samurai assassins out there? Fat Samurai Guy is here with Lady Bad Blood, and welcome to another episode of The Movie Dojo, where we discuss martial arts cinema and action films. Today in the dojo, we are going to review the film Triple Threat. Here's a quick plot synopsis. After a hit contract is taken out on a billionaire's daughter, a down and out team of mercenaries must take on a group of professional assassins and stop them before they kill their target. Now we're gonna give you the good, we're gonna give you the bad, we're gonna give you the badass. First up, the good. Tony Jaw, Scott Atkins, Tiger Chen, Michael Jai White, Iko Uwais, and JJ Yanin decided to get together and make a movie. And now for the bad. Okay, um, so when we first saw the trailer for this movie, we were like, holy shit, yeah. this is this is huge. Watch this our is, trailer reaction. This is it's, ep it's pretty epic. Staggering. I mean, yeah. all these superstars yes. in, in one film together. My head exploded. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm sorry! Oh! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh my god. No! Oh! No! Damn it! No! Damn it! <laughs> and it's not that it's awful, but it feels like so much is either missing yeah. or so many things had to get reshot and things got shuffled to the point where it just didn't make sense anymore. Yeah. You've got plot points that are kind of dropped. Mm -hmm. You've got You've got a mad dash, and this movie is very short, you've got a mad dash to introduce characters, kind of give them a backstory, and then do nothing with it. You've got instances where they're trying to make you feel for the characters, but it happens all so quickly that it just feels unearned. Yeah. And it just kind of feels like a mess in some areas. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. It's a threadbare, overbloated film, and I've never really seen anything quite like it before, where you have what should have been a very simple story, and mm -hmm. at its core, it is a very simple story. In a way, yeah. But some things kind of get beefed up to the point of, who cares? Why are, yeah. we, why are we paying attention to any of this? Mm -hmm. And some scenes just flat out don't really make sense. No. And a perfect example of this is Michael Wong's character. Like, who the fuck was he? Why was he there? There were so many scenes. I don't know if this was due to the reshoots mm -hmm. that they had to do, which kind of delayed the film, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but who was he? Like <laughs> he went, he was working with the he's working with the villains. Yeah. Communicating with them to let them know where to find Tony Jaw and Tiger Chin so they can kill them. Mm -hmm. And then later Tony Jaw meets up with Michael Wong and you get this this plot this thrown the story just came out of nowhere of he had a his Tony Jaw's character had a history of being this this murder you know, mass murderer, mercenary kind of thing and and it was just kind of like, <laughs> and then you owe me a favor. You owe me a favor. And then Michael Wong's like, okay, I owe you a favor. Even though I'm telling your friends that I met for the first time how much of a murderer you are. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. What is happening in this movie? But I do owe you a favor. We don't know why I owe you a favor. The movie doesn't bother to tell anyone why I owe you a favor. But it's okay. Because here, take all the guns. So you guys can have, all the good guys can have their weapons for the finale, and I'm gone. And there's there's lots of moments like that in the movie. It's very distracting. There was also some very, very awful and obvious uh, edits with ADR. Yes. Where they would put in... <laughs> They would put in just like voiceovers where yeah. it either clearly was not there yeah. or it was kind of for the sake of, oh, hey, stupid audience, <laughs> Ew, I'm just going to say this so that the yeah. audience gets it. It just, yeah. it was a little off-putting. Yeah. And, and, you know, we were watching this film with uh, Sexy Sumo and there was that one sequence where uh, they're all sitting down having dinner together or lunch and uh, Eco wakes up and because uh, he's injured because he went after Tiger Chan and uh, Tony Jaw for revenge and, you know. He finds out they're good guys, and they're sitting there just making food, and you know, you know, they have dialogue between all three of them, but because of the ADR, there are moments in that one scene where we were like, "Who the hell's talking right now?" <laughs> and back to the Michael Wan character, yeah. you just show the back of his head, and you just hear dialogue that you, it's just like it just. They probably had one plot yes. in, a, in a previous, you know, 
version of the yeah. story, and then they just added whatever bullshit they and wanted to with, with this. With Tiger Chen's character as well, the, the his past that was his past that was explained about yeah. him and his dad moving because of crime. Yeah, was just, that went nowhere. Yeah, and another instance where again things may have made more sense in another version of this movie but kind of got lost somewhere along the way you get this scene at the very beginning of the film where um eco and tony have this quick little scrap yeah. and then an explosion occurs and they get separated and kind of knocked down but not necessarily unconscious but kind of stunned and tiger chen comes in and, and gets uh, tony jaw and they bugger off and meanwhile eco's on the ground barely registering anything that's going on and then a couple scenes later when uh, Tiger and uh, Tony Jaw are in this fighting pit to yeah. kind of get some money to get out of the country. Right, pit fighting. And Eco's yeah. looking for them because it's somewhere along all the scrapping, his wife gets killed, which right. doesn't really matter because it's five seconds and then it's over with. <laughs> he enters the, the fight up yeah. against Tiger Chen right. and acts like Tiger should know who he is. Yeah. Remember me? And it's like... You didn't fight him before. Tiger maybe saw you for two seconds, yeah. and you would have had no significance. No, we we went back, and Tiger did not once, like they did not once look no, at each other. There was no so there's that, there. that pit fighting sequence makes no sense because they they recognize each other in the in the pit. But through all this this bad, there was a shining yet <laughs> dark light at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Something so phenomenal <laughs> that the second it was seen on on the screen, I nearly died <laughs> from internal laughter. The kind of laughter that only happens when it is so stunning what you're witnessing. <laughs> you, you can't actually physically laugh. Scott Atkins' wig. <laughs> it makes the briefest of appearances. But it makes an impact. It is... Possibly the worst bit of, of any type of synthetic hair since Scott Atkins' poor beard in Legend of Hercules. <laughs> Except this is... It, it, have you ever seen those Halloween shop yeah. facial hairs? Yeah, like Party City or like whatever. It's like a bum wig, like yeah. a bum facial <laughs> hair that it, it's clearly made out of some poor synthetic yeah. animal. Like, come on. And it, it's, it, Scott Atkins is the man. I think, I think we could do a little bit better than that. It's it's simply you'll see it in the photo. If you it's it's simply just glorious. <laughs> and now for the badass. So despite the choppy editing, despite the tacked on scenes, which <laughs> I don't think helped the movie. Despite some of the plot being messy, you can follow some of it, but there's some of it that's distracting. And despite the wig, <laughs> action movie junkies out there, I believe you will be pleased. So far, uh, from the filmography that we've seen so far from Jesse, mm. uh, this guy really knows how to film a fight sequence. There's no fucking shaky cam, yeah. there's no zoomed in, there's not five billion quick cut editing during the fight sequences. He shows it, boom. He seems to have a respect for the genre and yes. an understanding of how to yes. make it come across on the big screen. My only minor nitpick complaint is that um, the end finale fight uh, with everyone brawling with each other uh, was in a dark building at night and there was very little light which would seem kind of strange that to pick that for your end finale throwdown fight yeah it's all at night in the dark uh, but it's well lit just enough to where you could see uh, you can still see the action mm -hmm. so you can still enjoy uh, the finale fights of the film. It's just kind of odd that they, they picked it at night in the dark. And despite, again, everything being kind of messy and things kind of not really going anywhere with the characters, it was fantastic seeing all of these actors, yes. these martial artists. It was a treat. On, yeah. the, on the same screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tony Jaw, in particular, I don't know, Tony. Tony's just like, he seems to be having the time of his freaking life right now between yeah. this and his appearance in Triple X, which I just rewatched recently, and oh my god, that's the best bad movie um, of all time. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, but yeah. it's it's so much fun seeing all these actors and freaking Michael Jai White. Yeah. Mr. Oh Scene Stealer, Michael Jai White. Do you have any idea what you're doing? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. No joke, yeah. he was having an absolute blast yes, he was. playing the baddie in this movie. Oh, I, yeah. I could have seen a whole other film with him and his crew 
just acting like that oh, when, man. They, when they had time to actually banter back and forth and it was you know fun. oh man every, every time he was uh kind of going up against eco and like whispering shit to him talking to him basically punking him trying to feel him out yeah i got a boner yeah <laughs> <laughs> Another one of my favorite scenes of the movie with Michael Jai White is, it's just random out of nowhere. <laughs> They're all sitting, all the bad guys are all sitting around, eating, drinking, doing their thing. And uh, he, Michael Jai White's on the side looking down into like a basket or crate of DVDs. Oh, oh, Sam and Donnie. He basically just yeah. it. <laughs> it's just like, ooh, and, Sam and Donnie movie. He just steals it. It's just, great. I don't know if that was an ad lib, but. I, Probably I, was. I don't know. It's just stuff like that. We just needed more of it. You, you got the vibe that everyone, like you said, had an amazing time mm -hmm. uh, making the film. Everyone kind of had a lot of fun. And even Michael Bisbing. I'm not the biggest Michael Bisbing fan. Yeah, he was fine. I would have replaced Michael Bis, but I thought he did a good job. Yeah. You know, for, for him being Michael Bisbing, yeah. amongst the heavyweights of the martial arts genre, I thought mm -hmm. he did a, a decent job. I would have replaced him though, but you know, somebody else <laughs> to fight Tiger Chen, like you know. That. But yeah. I thought he did, he was solid. And of course, Scott Atkins. He's Scott Atkins, man. Yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah. He was fine in the film. He did a good job. And uh, the end finale fight between him and Tony Jaw. Come on, are you listening to this? Tony Jaw, Scott Atkins, brawling. End finale fight was very well done. And by the end of the movie, I kind of felt like finally, you know, I got my money's worth. Mm -hmm. So I know you've been wondering. <laughs> What took so damn long for us to do this movie review? Oh, good. And that's because... That's a loaded question. There's a lot. A lot's happened to us oh, this year. Oh, my God. Um, having We're getting issues, personal. Okay. Yeah, having, we had issues with the channel a while back. You, mm. You'll see a video on that. Just kind of click back a while. You'll, you'll hear all the drama with the channel. Mm. So that kind of delayed us as well. But I got the same vibe when I watched the very first Expendables film that I did with Triple Threat. Mm. It's very similar. And what I mean by that is, when I watched the first Expendables movie, it was like a dream movie because I had all my heroes in there and they were kicking ass, there was tons of action and explosions and a lot of one-liners and, and a lot of fun, but I thought it could be better. Mm. And even though I was entertained, I was still disappointed. Mm. It, and, and that's kind of how I felt when I watched Triple Threat the first time was that I was entertained, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be because, come on, our expectations were like ridiculous. Just go back and watch that trailer reaction, mm. all right? I was screaming like a little girl and I fell off the couch, okay? And you know, when your expectations are so high, you know. See my Godzilla King of the Monsters review. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to take a break. You know, and then uh, some time went by, and then I watched Expendables again, the first Expendables, and I appreciated it a lot more. I was entertained with it a lot more, and that's kind of what happened with Triple Threat. Even though I still had issues with the with the messy plot and everything, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Mm. Um, I still was entertained uh, by the action that was there, and I would rather have had this movie than it never happened. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, Crossover type st shit like this. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Yeah, look I, at Tango and Cash. They came out in the eighties. Look yeah. how long, I mean, look how long. I mean, you don't really see heavyweights. Yeah, you know, like these guys. They're they're huge stars in their genre in their respective yeah. genres. You don't see them. It's very rare they make they do yeah. movies together. I, I I have to agree with you on that. Um, I, again, I I had major issues with with the directions multiple directions the movie was trying to take. You either needed to be a simple, no frills, straight ahead linear story, or you needed to be like a two and a half hour background to every single character like the raid two. Okay. Right. You either but you can't you can't mix the two and right. whatever happened during the production of this film, I feel like that's what kind yeah. of went down. I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like the movie, in the end, suffered for it because it should have just been this straightforward, just boom, simple. And it, mm -hmm. you see the shades there, but then it just doesn't work for me. But seeing all of these actors in a film together... All again, these badasses. Again, I Have think they done... Have they had better fight sequences and done better work yes. in their own movies? <laughs> multiple, yes. Multiple times, yes. Yes. Obviously. But... But it was still nice to see them all on board it's yeah. nice to know that there are still people out there 
that have a love for this genre yes. because it just it just this genre and these actors at least in the states at least on our end of things it just does not get the love it deserves no it's such a low budget genre to be a part of now it's hard to get distribution for mm -hmm. a lot of films like this jesse v johnson's films in particular are known for just going straight to video especially in the states i don't know mm -hmm. if it's like that overseas um, but here, it would be a miracle if we ever got one of his movies in the theater. Yeah. It's, it's it actually like, was released here in a you know, very limited Very, release. very limited. Otherwise, we, we, we tried to go, but we couldn't. I think we were checking within a 50-mile radius, and it yeah. just wasn't happening. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 tough. So yeah. like you said, I, I am glad. As many problems as, as I had with the film, I am glad that it exists. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for the rating. Go! Um. <laughs> yeah, having said all that, again, I don't hate it. No. I, I did not have the... The anger that I did when I first watched Ninja Busters and then came around to at least appreciating that it existed. Yeah. It wasn't anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably go, again, again, three is average. Three is average. Yeah. I would go 3.3. .3. Okay, all right. I give Triple Threat 3.7 out of 5 Ninja Stars. That's it for today's episode of The Movie Dojo. Let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of Triple Threat. A piece of shit garbage? What the fuck happened? Or bloody good time. Let us know. We'd like to thank all you badasses for watching. You guys rock. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. I would go 3.3. .3. Okay, all right. All right. <clears throat> all right. No. All right. All right. All right. What? Break it down. Uh, all right.